I'll call the board of selectmen to order. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for bearing with us through a few technical glitches here. I think we're up and running. Um, unfortunately, Andrea Harris Long is ill this evening and couldn't attend in person. She is <clears throat> online on Zoom, um, but she's um, going to stay on mute, I believe. Courtney Lewis is here uh, from the MAPC, and he's going to lead us through the presentation. Uh, the format of this evening is to have a brief presentation of where we are on the project. Uh, and then towards the end of the meeting, we're going to have more of a, a working session, chance for people to give feedback. And, and Courtney will walk us through all that. So um, that said, I will turn the meeting over to Courtney Lewis and go from there. Thank you. All right. Um, can you hear me? No. No. You have to get closer, I think. Hello. Testing, testing. I, I'm not. Testing, testing. Is it? Good? That's good. Hmm? Okay. We're hearing All you right. at home when you talk. Can so. everyone hear? We can at home. Courtney. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for bearing with us. Uh, my name is Courtney Lewis. Uh, I'm a senior planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, I have been working alongside Andrea Harris Long, uh, who's also a senior planner at MAPC and the project manager for uh, this um, bylaw project. Uh, I'm also joined this evening by my colleague, uh, Christian Brandt, who is a community engagement. Uh, he's the community engagement manager at, at MAPC, uh, and we're very happy to be here. Um, before we jump into things, just full moment of transparency. Getting here this evening has been like being in a, a Chevy Chase movie. So, so we definitely uh, had a quite the adventure getting here this evening, uh, which is why we're a bit delayed. Um, so again, thank you for bearing with us and, and thank you all uh, who have joined us virtually uh, via Zoom. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about the Essex Zoning Bylaw uh, Project. Um, we, um, just to note that this, uh, tonight's presentation will be recorded, so uh, people will have time to review and, and go back over the content um, at their leisure. Uh, this is a look at tonight's agenda. Um, we had originally planned for this to be a mirrored experience for people providing feedback uh, and input in person as well as virtually. Uh, we ran into a, a technical difficulty with in, in the virtual space. Um, so that will launch tomorrow uh, uh, at some time and, and links will be provided on the project website as well as the uh, the town site. So we'll be sure to, um, and you'll also receive a, a notification if you uh, registered for this evening's uh, event. But uh, as I mentioned, this is a look at tonight's agenda. We'll, we'll start with uh, a quick welcome and introductions. I'll walk you through um, uh, the project and the process and how we arrived here. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, we'll recap phase one, uh, and then we'll talk about phase two, which is where we are now. Um, and then um, uh, the future phase, phase three, uh, which will take place later, um, later, later on uh, in the spring. Uh, and then we'll transition to the engagement events. So this is the project team. As I mentioned, um, MAPC has been working with the town to uh, look at, to review and, and update its zoning bylaw. Um, this effort has been led and, guide, led and guided by the planning board uh, in partnership with the board of select, the, the board of selectmen. Um, we have also, uh, started working with a, a group of uh, local residents and business owners that we we call zoning champions and they will be uh, working with us throughout the process to help uh, get the word out and and also provide additional information about 
um, updates and the process itself. So um, taking a quick look at the, at the project background, as I mentioned, uh, this project will unfold in three phases. We are currently in phase two. Uh, in phase one, phase one was, um, was all about looking at the existing zoning bylaw. So uh, Andrea and I did a comprehensive review of the town's uh, zoning bylaw. And we looked at um, areas that needed work, areas that were working well. And uh, we, through that process, we held two public forums and gathered feedback from the community. We also uh, conducted a, a, an, an online survey. And at the tail end of um, phase one, we also worked with the the town to apply for a community one stop for growth grant with the state in order to fund the uh, subsequent phases of this, this process. Uh, phase two is, um, is recodification and community vision. So uh, in phase one, we look at an approach to, um, to phase two and we provided the town with two different options on a way uh, to update and improve the zoning bylaw. Um, and so the, the town decided to do, as a first step, uh, they created a prioritized list of uh, potential updates, which we'll uh, ask for feedback on this evening. Uh, and as a first step, uh, we, we plan to, recodify or reorganize, reformat, and update the, the bylaw and ensure that any future amendments or changes align with the community's vision uh, for the town's growth in the coming years. Uh, once we've gathered input and uh, we have crafted uh, a vision for future zoning in the town, then we'll uh, transition to phase three, which will focus on making uh, modifications and amendments to the bylaw. So just as a, a, a quick recap, um, what is zoning and why is it important? Uh, historically, zoning was uh, put in place um, to, to help protect the health, safety, and welfare of the community by separating out uh, uses. Um, zoning regulates how land is used across the town and it also shapes buildings, homes, and, and uh, neighborhoods. Uh, and that, uh, that's fine, go ahead. Um, so in phase one, I mentioned that uh, Andrea and I uh, did a comprehensive review of the bylaw. We then um, uh, create, um, produced a diagnostic report that included uh, a list of recommendations on uh, uh, potential ways for the, the town to move forward and, and making improvements to the bylaw. Um, our our goals in phase one were to uh, understand existing land use patterns, uh, gauge input uh, from the public on their perception of uh, the existing bylaw, and also uh, look at opportunities to incorporate uh, best practices um, for future changes to the bylaw. Uh, so as I mentioned, we had uh, several discussions and collected information from the community. We um, we got the word out through uh, flyers, uh, through the project website and email lists and listservs uh, via social media. We held two virtual community forums. Um, and between those two forums, we had uh, approximately 166 participants. We held um, focus to focus groups, and we also conducted stakeholder interviews with, um, with residents as well as town staff, uh, like the building in inspector. Um, and um, 
we also launched the online survey, which um, which um, received approximately 428 responses. Um, so one of the things that we asked in, in phase one uh, in the survey was um, we asked residents to tell us what some of the uh, challenges were to um, that they saw or felt were important in terms of zoning, uh, in terms of the town's existing zoning, and which what areas were most important to focus on. And uh, one of the uh, most important, um, there was a, a long list of uh, comments, but some of the um, highest ranking themes or comments were um, sustainable growth in a in a way that's appropriate and in uh, and aligns with the uh, the town's existing character. Um, we also received several comments about looking at uh, incompatible uses being located next to other uses. Um, we we discussed some of the physical and environmental constraints for growth in the town, both from uh, an infrastructural uh, standpoint, as well as um, uh, natural barriers uh, and environmental um, uh, considerations uh, in terms of impact for future development. Um, we, as I mentioned, we came up with a list of recommendations. Um, there were eight overall uh, recommendations. The first one was to establish zoning districts and a use table uh, that organize zoning districts uh, and address non-conforming uses. Um, the second recommendation was updating use regulations, dimensional and development standards. The third was removing barriers to expand uh, housing options in the town. The fourth recommendation was aligning zoning uh, with the general uh, bylaws as well as the community's uh, values. Recommend recommendation five was making the bylaw more user friendly uh, and easier to interpret both from uh, a resident standpoint, but also from uh, town officials who have to make uh, decisions and have to interpret the, the bylaw. Um, looking at improvements to the application review process was recommendation six, uh, expanding uh, local staffing capacity to help adequately administer and enforce the, the zoning bylaws uh, was recommendation seven, and developing a, a robust, a robust <laughs> community engagement strategy to ensure that uh, any decisions made were in line and, and reflected the, the community's values. So now we're here in phase two, which we've um, titled recodification and community vision. Again, uh, as a first step, um, we're looking at making the, um, as a first step, we're looking at making uh, the bylaw more user friendly and intuitive, um, and we're we're also looking to gather feedback from the community in order to know to help guide the planning board and the town in uh, making future decisions on uh, amendments. So our goals for this phase are uh, update and amend the existing uh, zoning and land use regulations to better reflect and align with community values create a more user-friendly bylaw, uh, guide growth and improve the quality of future development and ensure that uh, any changes, uh, uh, any existing regulations or future changes are consistent with, um, with state and um, with state regulations as well as recent uh, st statutes such as 3A. Um, so what is zoning recodification? What does it mean? 
uh, essentially it's a process uh, of, um, we like to think of it as kind of uh, a spring cleaning or a tidying up of the, of the zoning bylaw. Um, um, recodification means to recode a set of laws, rules, or more simply uh, to rearrange, reformat, and reorganize the, the bylaw. Um, this, uh, this is essentially what um, phase two entails. Um, and some of the proposed changes are, um, con are consistent formatting, numbering and labeling, reorganizing uh, certain sections of the bylaw so that uh, they're more intuitively located and, um, and more user-friendly, um, consolidating definitions that are currently scattered all throughout the, the bylaw, uh, correcting any, uh, any uh, grammatic and, uh, and <clears throat> any typos in the existing bylaws and ensuring that uh, the text is consistent with uh, state statutes and regulations. In, as a part of phase two, we are not uh, proposing any substantive changes. Um, we're literally reorganizing existing content. The, the, the wording and the language uh, out, outside of um, making uh, edits and uh, corrections to grammar uh, will be verbatim um, word for word as it is in the existing bylaws. So um, the community may be questioning why, why have we decided to, um, to do this now? Um, and um, one of the reasons is we're following up, the, the town is following up and taking action um, on the recommendations that were uh, proposed in phase one, uh, and we're they they are really uh, trying to do that at a pace uh, that is comfortable uh, uh, for the community and comfortable and digestible for um, the community. Um, the current bylaw main um, has several uh, has antiquated wording. Um, and is a bit uh, outdated. And so there's also um, other issues that makes it a bit harder to uh, administer. Uh, and it also sets, uh, doing this process also sets the town up with a framework so that they can make future change. So it's easier to make uh, future changes at a pace that our residents are and the town are comfortable with. Um, the time to uh, to do this work is also important because uh, there will be there are two warrants on the uh, there are two articles on the um, on the warrant for town meeting. Um, Articles 18 and 19, uh, which will ask um, uh, town meeting members to uh, vote uh, in order to, the articles will ask town uh, meeting members to vote to approve the, recod the recodified version of the, uh, the zoning bylaw. So looking, this is what essentially is proposed for the, uh, for the changes. We're looking at taking the bylaw and reorganizing it uh, from uh, 16 different sections to 10 uh, and, and uh, also locating information in, way, in, in sections of the bylaw where uh, it, it makes better sense. Uh, and it's easier to find information and content. Um, I believe you received a handout this evening that, that kind of uh, 
uh, summarizes where information will be. Didn't do the handout. We did a handout for town meeting. We didn't pass it out tonight. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, if we go to the next slide, um, this will help kind of, uh, this will help you visualize uh, what we mean. So for the first two sections, we're essentially uh, carrying those over, uh, making no changes to, to those sections. Uh, for section three, we're relocating land use regulations into uh, section 6-4, which will be uh, use regulations. Um, for, <clears throat> for section four, we are moving um, that to uh, section 6-9, which will be titled non-conforming uses and structures. Um, we're moving supplementary uh, provisions to Section 6-7, uh, which essentially will include uh, the existing content with uh, a few additions. Uh, section 6-6, which is off-street parking and loading, will be relocated to Section 6-6, development regulations, along with signage. Uh, which is currently in section six, seven, uh, administration and uh, board of appeals, which are sections six, eight and six, nine will be relocated to section six dash 10, which is now titled uh, administration and regulations. Uh, section six dash 10, which currently has uh, uh, Section 6, 10, 11, and 12 uh, will now be housed, are, are proposed to be housed in section 6, 3, which is uh, titled Establishment of Districts. And essentially this just groups all of the, exist, the town's existing zoning districts into one section of the, of the bylaw so that it's easier to compare and contrast um, dimensional standards and regulations for each zoning district. Um, there will be no changes to section 6-13. It will carry over and be relocated in section 6-8, um, which will still be the open space residential or OSRD section. Um, uh, section 6-14 uh, will be uh, stricken as well as... Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but for the recodification that we're presenting right now, 614 and 616 got stuck in additional regulations as a housekeeping right now, because we're not, we're not taking anything out yet. And, and while we're on the topic, I just want to mention to everyone that the um, overview of the recodification is already up on the town website if you go to the town meeting tab as is the uh, 58 page complete version of the recodification so people can study that and look at that even now between now and, and town meeting you don't have to wait to town meeting to get to see the handout um and excuse me for, for misspeaking um and uh six uh, 15, which is the downtown zoning district, again, will be moved to establishment of districts with the other uh, overlay and existing base districts for the town. Um, and I'll talk um, very briefly about phase three, which, again, will not take place until after town meeting. But essentially in phase three, we'll take feedback from the, the town and we'll start to make uh, additional changes uh, to update and modernize the, the zoning bylaw. So um, I just wanted to share a few examples of communities that uh, have recently undergone um, a similar process. Uh, and also show examples of ways that some of the existing information could be better organized. 
So in Arlington, in their bylaw, they um, they use uh, they have color coded sections to um, to act as visual cues for users of the bylaw. Um, they also use a series of <clears throat> definite um, a series of diagrams and illustrations to help um, support um, definitions um, and um, specifications for for signage, for parking, for measurements. Um, in Ipswich, they have um, consolidated their uh, uses into a, a use regulation table. Um, and they've also uh, provided this three-tier classification where uh, they define the, the use classification, the use category, and then the use type. So um, it's, uh, for example, um, a single family home, they've defined uh, the classification as a principal use for the land. They've also uh, talked about um, the category, which, which is residential, and then the type of um, the type of use. So single family, two family dwelling, multifamily dwelling. And they've also um, in the um, vertical columns, they've provided um, the the various district zoning districts um, throughout the town. <clears throat> Uh, in Newton, uh, again, they use graphics to help um, de depict uh, some of those um, um, more complex uh, measurements or definitions uh, and, uh, and showing illustrations of uh, principal and accessory uh, structures, as well as uh, lots, lot coverage and setbacks. Um, as, as well as building height. And they've also uh, organized that those dimensional standards into a table to better um, organize the, the information. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, phase three will um, be um, supported and uh, by zoning ambassadors. And this is a diverse group of um, Essex residents and business owners from different uh, geographical areas of the town uh, who, who also hold uh, different perspectives about uh, zoning land use and the future of the town. And as I mentioned, they will help assist in, in spreading the word and uh, helping us to um, provide residents with information um, both on changes and updates, um, and they will help shape how we uh, communicate and engage with, with you all moving forward. Um, so um, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, at the end of phase one, we provided those recommendations uh, and we presented that information to the the, the planning board, they then took uh, the information that we provided as well as community input and created a, a list of um, potential update, updates for, um, for future amendments. And um, this is what we want to help uh, get better clarity on and, and refinement on moving forward. Um, so the first uh, priority update or proposed update would be um, addressing definitions, um, providing clear, modern, and workable uh, a workable set of definitions will make the zoning bylaw easier to uh, easier for users to interpret, as well as town officials to administer and enforce. Um, the second recommendation or the, the second um, priority update um, is to codify the uh, general zoning district. Uh, some of you may uh, have seen this graphic from phase one, which 
uh, notes that 98% uh, of the town's land area lies um, in the town's unofficial general zoning district. Um, the district itself, um, although people recognize it and talk about it, it's not codified or documented in the town's existing zoning bylaw. The, the three districts that are are that are defined and um, documented are uh, the Central Konomo Point Zoning District, the Southern Konomo Point Zoning District, and the Downtown Zoning District. The town also has uh, three zoning overlays, um, which are closely closely tied to. Um, it, um, uh, some of the environmental components of the town. Uh, and just to like further emphasize um, uh, the uh, existing uh, bylaws, essentially any, any, any resident that owns a lot or property within that general zoning district uh, is allowed to have any use uh, on that land, whether it's residential, commercial, or industrial, uh, provided that the use meets the dimensional requirements as specified in the town's existing zoning bylaw. And hopefully this graphic ex um, expresses that in a more visual way. Essentially, um, if a commercial use, if a, a, if a resident had a commercial use and that use met the uh, the frontage and lot dimensions needed for a commercial use. It could the way that the town's existing uh, bylaw is written, uh, that commercial use could be positioned uh, right next door to other residential uses. Um, some people have. Uh, varied of opinions about about it and uh we're not here to uh say one way or, or the other whether that's a good or a bad thing we're simply here to assist we're here to report on what we see as uh, potential issues or things to consider and and present that information to the community and it's uh you're in the driver's seat and you make the decision at the end of the at the end of the day. <clears throat> um, another uh, potential update is up, an update to the the uses. Uh, the uses listed in the existing bylaw in section six uh, dash three point one. Um, they lack precision uh, and um, they're somewhat vague. Uh, uh, one example is um, the the current bylaw lacks a classification for uh, public or institutional uses, and um, through our conversations with uh, residents as well as uh, stake doing some of the stakeholder interviews in phase one, we learned that the town. Um, there were there were some challenges with uh, permitting the the town's new fire uh, public safety building. Um, uh, another potential uh, update is site plan review, and uh, this is a regulatory tool that communities use that allows them to review a proposed development. Um, to assure that the project meets specific development standards uh, and complies with local zoning regulations. Um, and also, in, um, it uh, allows the community time to determine whether or not uh, the proposed project would have an adverse effect on the community. Uh, it usually focuses on things like parking, traffic, drainage, uh, roadway construction, uh, signage and utilities, screening and buffering, 
uh, with landscaping and um, it helps um, both the town and the developer or um, proposing the project um, um, come to um, help, it, it helps both sides produce uh, the best design for, for the community. Um, another um, potential update is looking at uh, affordable housing and that's both um, that's both naturally occurring affordable housing as well as um, deed restricted affordable housing. Uh, during phase one, uh, several residents emphasized a need uh, for a wider variety of housing options. Uh, the current bylaw does not uh, address some of the innovative housing options that are included in um, in some of the more recently updated um, bylaws and ordinances, um, things um, such as accessory dwelling units, cottage housing, live work uh, units, and, and tiny homes are not addressed. Um, and during phase one, 64% um, of survey respondents um, noted that they, they had a need or uh, desired to see accessory dwelling units be permitted in the town. Um, and this could be, um, this is, um, this is an option that would allow for um, things like um, older, resident, older residents who are looking to downsize as well as um, residents who would like to have um, multi-generational housing um, on, their, on their property. Um, Another uh, potential update is, uh, is scenic roads. So the town has three designated uh, scenic roads. Uh, however, and, and they are noted in the, um, I think in the, the town's general bylaws. However, they, uh, they are not mentioned in the, in the zoning bylaw. Um, another potential update or amendment uh, is to special permits and looking at um, which look which essentially authorizes the the planning board uh, or the special uh, permit granting authority for the town to um, uh, essentially it's it's authorization from the planning board to construct a building or establish a use that's not allowed by right. So I have done a lot of talking and I'm sure there are several questions. So I, I wanna take a moment to um, hear from the audience, both here in person as well as uh, virtually, feel free to uh, submit any questions you may have. Um, in the chat. Um, oh, sure. I, I would just, um, before we get into questions, I just wanted to clarify um, a couple of issues from the planning board's perspective and uh, how we're going to be moving through this project because there's sort of a, a two tracks to this effort, and one is the work that we're doing with MAPC as part of these forums and part of the updates that we're going to be preparing. Um, that work goes on while MAPC is on board, and we have their services through, I think, June of 2024. Uh, however, that does not mean that we'll have all the updates done, because as, as Courtney mentioned, the process that we want to sort of unroll is is gradual and step-by-step step so that people have an opportunity to learn what changes are being be proposed uh, and getting familiar with them. So 
it's going to be over the course probably of, of, of several years as we work to update various parts of the bylaw because overhauling everything that Courtney's talked about in the next couple of town meetings would be a Herculean task and, and none of us wanna learn that much about zoning that fast. Uh, so, so that said, Courtney did a great job of presenting the article that we will be, uh, we have on town meeting warrant, which is the recodification or the reorganization of our existing bylaw. And he showed you the categories, how we're moving things around. What's important to remember about this article is that the language and the intent of our current bylaw does not change at all. We're not proposing any substantive to changes to it. We are simply moving all the existing language into new spots in the bylaw. And this is going to help us in the future when we do go to make changes to be able to put them in their new home in the right spot that makes sense for a bylaw that can be amended easily. As, as you've seen, we have one general use zoning district and in recent years we've created three smaller zoning districts and they just get sort of tacked on to the end of the bylaw as a whole new section. Whereas now they'll all be living in one section that is establishment of districts. And if at some time in the future, we codify our general use district or look at other types of districts, then they have a home and they just continue in that rather than enlarge the bylaw with additional sections. So um, that's what's coming at town meeting is, is just that our article 19 is um, a couple of typos, honestly, it's it's a real nothing article. Uh, we will have a public hearing on that as is required for bylaw um, articles. And that's next Wednesday night, same time, same place in this room. Uh, we will be going over that in more detail as part of the required public hearing that we hold before uh, the town meeting. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that because there's a lot of material that MAPC is working on and presenting, but just so people know that we'll be taking a very measured approach as we go through these changes. Thanks. Now you can ask your questions. <laughs> There is one question in the chat it says, can you give an example of what the proposed clarifications in phase two will prevent, limit, or clearly allow? Uh, that is going to be the focus of a lot of the public outreach. We're trying to gauge what people are interested in, um, in changing, updating, and amending. Uh, a couple of uh, a couple of issues are, we're gonna talk about zoning districts, but we're also not going to be jumping into trying to draw the town into zoning districts right away, because that's that's a big job and that requires a lot of public outreach and a lot of understanding uh, for residents and, and business owners to understand what those changes would look like. So uh, that may be a long-term goal, but it's not an immediate goal. But in the in the shorter term, we're looking at better understanding things like the site plan review process. And can we make the site plan process, site plan review, is this working? Okay, and making the site plan review process more transparent um, and and open and um, providing notifications to abutters, things like that. So those are some of the things we're starting to think about. We're going to be looking at what should be in special permit categories. We have a series, we have, um, I think, 13 or 14 different special permit categories right now. We're going to be looking at what might be other appropriate categories uh, so those are a couple of things that we're looking at, but part of the project effort right now is to understand what residents are concerned about in the bylaw, what they would like to see changed, and what um, they do not want to see changed. So uh, we're not set on anything. We know that the bylaw needs updating, and there's some parts of it that we feel could be better done. So the planning board has a set of priorities of our own based on our experience with um, using and enforcing the bylaw. Uh, but we're also looking for public input, which is part of the reason for having all these forums, um, part of the all the outreach that was done in phase one, which informed a lot of the approaches that we're taking now. And then we also have the zoning ambassadors who are, as Courtney explained, residents who will 
uh, be a resource for our friends and neighbors to learn more about the project and also to give feedback about their concerns or what they do or do not like. Do we have any, uh, I meant to acknowledge you as, uh, as, as we were talking through that, that slide, do we have any uh, zoning ambassadors in the room at the moment? So these are the people that, that you will, <laughs> These are the people that you should definitely become friends with throughout this process. They they will definitely be able to uh, uh, provide information, but also gather your thoughts, your comments, and bring that information back to the project team as we as we work throughout the um, the project. Yeah. And we had another comment. It it just says, "I like this logical and uh, logical and paced approach." We won't be drinking from a fire hose and folks will have time to respond as we walk along. Another question just came in, is the town trying to get Essex out of the 3A requirements? Uh, 3A requirements. Uh, we have a handout on that and um, we actually just put the finishing touches on that today. It's available here at the forum. We'll make sure it goes up online for people to read. What is transpired, and I'll try and do this in a nutshell with 3A requirements, is that we have uh, worked through the process with the assistance of MAPC. They have uh, really done the legwork for us and investigated what those requirements are and determined how Essex does or does not meet them. So the process that has unfolded so far is that the state required a all towns within the MBTA um, area to submit an action plan um, with respect to how they were going to meet the requirements of the new 3A uh, statute. Uh, there are four categories of um, being an MBTA town. Um, one obviously is if you have a, a station, a railroad station or a T station in your town, and the lowest category falls to what they call adjacent communities. And then there's another category for adjacent small communities, which is sort of the lowest category of requirements that you can have. That's us. We are an adjacent small community with um, a requirement to be able to demonstrate that we have a an existing zoning district in town that has the capacity capacity, not having the units or anything like that, has the capacity to provide 83 multifamily units. So there's nothing in the law that requires you to either provide those units or anything other than to just demonstrate that you have the capacity. So um, Dana worked with Brendan to submit our plan to the state, and we got um, an interim approval uh, that said that our action plan was accepted. Uh, and the way I like to describe this is we got an action plan approved that had exactly no actions in it. So what they have in essence said is we're approving your no action plan. So Essex right now, to the interpretation of everyone sitting at this table, is compliant. They haven't given us our final compliance because the state hasn't gotten to that stage yet, but we got an approved interim compliance and we will in the next couple of months be submitting materials that um, is virtually the same thing saying, hey, we're still compliant. We still have the capacity for those 83 units in our downtown district. And we expect that we will receive um, a certificate of compliance at that time. So there is nothing about 3A uh, that is actually from it what we can see going to affect anything that we need to do in town here. Does that answer that? And there's nothing else currently in the chat. It, uh, the person says, thank you. I have a question. Um, if, you, if you don't mind for the TV, for the TV viewers, if you could go on the microphone, they won't hear you. Thank you. Um, is it the intent of the review to um, make the requirements uh, stringent enough for new units to be built so that there would be an elimination of a, quote, approval not required kind of uh, situations? What What is the, when you get all this codified and get all this labeled and everything, 
what is it going to help us do to eliminate random kinds of things happening without a strict review? About what kind of review? Uh, for new buildings or, um, you know, use of land um, so that there isn't this approval not required kind of a thing. So approval not required is actually, um, it's a process where a home, a, a property owner can subdivide a piece of property into uh, lots that meet existing zoning criteria. So um, <clears throat> Approval not required is strictly strictly a division of land that um, meets our zoning bylaw. Uh, so that doesn't permit a use. It doesn't necessarily even um, grant that the potential building is in compliance with zoning regulations. It's strictly something that a person takes to the registry to record on their deed. What what the I, I I'm kind of reading between the lines in in, in your question, but I think uh, <clears throat> what we don't have is a way to uh, govern or approve or deny uses on a piece of property. We have one general use district that allows a single use um, as long as it meets the zoning criteria on a piece of property. <coughs> Excuse me. The process to uh, either put a new structure on a, a on a property or change the use of a property is through the process of site plan review. The site plan review process offers the planning board an opportunity to put requirements on um, a use uh, and suggest changes or modifications. It does not allow the planning board to deny a use. If it's a use that's permitted as of right in our general district bylaw right now, you can put that anywhere. So that's something that we're really trying to gauge how people feel about that. And do we wanna have a stricter site plan review process that uh, includes a possibility of denial or more stringent regulation? So there's, that's something we're trying to understand is, is the site plan review uh, process uh, rigorous enough to really protect the community the way we wanna protect it. And that's part of the public outreach process that we want to understand what residents want to see. Some people like the fact that there's no regulation and they can do whatever they want with their land. There's, I think, a greater number of people from what I'm hearing that are worried about uh, having uses that aren't suited to certain areas. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. That That's good. I'm, I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> see? Um, the, uh, it, it, as far as that review process is concerned, it takes into account density, uh, storage, and all these kinds of things too, right? Uh, <clears throat> it, it doesn't really account for density. Uh, our, our minimum lot standards take into account density. Uh, sewage is something that's been limiting development in Essex for years because there's a certain capacity that's there. And if you don't have the capacity to build more than you just can't build right now. Uh, and that's something that the community needs to think about because it could change. Um, the Gloucester is rebuilding the, the sewage plant and there's also uh, talk starting of a regional sewer system. So if more sewage capacity becomes available to Essex, there could be more development here. And that's one of the reasons that we're also looking at having the community conversations and understanding what we want our community to look like so that we can put the guardrails in place that will help keep Essex looking like the majority of us want it to. So and still that's, deal with the 83 units. The the 83 units is not a real thing. It's a capacity. It's a theory. It's it's a concept. So we aren't under any kind of requirement to actually provide those units no. ever. No. It's demonstrating that on the property that we have and with the zoning bylaw that we have in place, those units could exist if someone else wanted to build them. But... Uh, we're not under any kind of requirement to actually affect those. We don't have to at some point say, hey, look, Massachusetts, we have 83 units. All we have to say is, hey, we have the capacity for 83 units. And if you pick up the handout in the back, okay, yeah, that's. Well, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you.
Sure. Thank you for coming. Come up to the microphone, please. Yeah, I want to first echo Gabe's sentiment. Uh, you guys have been great with communication and outreach and the surveys, and now we really appreciate the opportunity for the input here. Um, my first question is, I may have misunderstood a graphic about the three different phases, but it looked like it was uh, one of the slides early in the presentation here. It looked like phase three was meant to wrap up uh, by November of this year, but your explanation made it sound like it's going to spill over at least until sometime next year. So uh, we have a sort of a limited engagement of our uh, zoning expert consultants with MAPC, and that's through a project grant that the town secured. So in, in the time that we have with MAPC, we, we want to get all the work done. We want to get these changes written, but we're going to keep them in a drawer for now. We'll, we'll, the public will know about them. It's a very transparent process, but we're not... It, it, we could potentially change the general use district. We could look at other districts. We could look at rewriting the site plan review. We could add special permits. We could, there's a whole lot that can be improved in our bylaw, but the town meeting to approve that would, it just wouldn't be possible. It, it's too much material for a town meeting to digest. So what I'm trying to describe is that the process that we'll be working with MAPC is a much shorter schedule. And then we'll have all those changes in hand and little by little, we will prioritize them and bring them to town meeting. So for example, and I'm talking strictly hypothetically here, we could in November come with, here's our new site plan review process. Here's two new categories of special permit. And do you want to approve those? Or we could come with, let's codify our general use district so that we can say this is a use district and we can standardize that in dimensional tables with the other zoning districts that we have. And then next May, we could come with a two or three more articles. But the depending on how many changes we make in town meeting happening every six months, it could take several years before we get through all of the housekeeping articles that we're looking. And it's also going to be a process to understand what people are looking for, um, the changes that they want to see. And, you know, in forums like this, it's, it, it takes a while to, to get residents up to speed on the shenanigans that we're up to here. So we want to be very careful, cautious, and clear through the whole process. So the MAPC project part is shorter than what the planning board will be working through over the next several years, probably, okay. to be honest. I think you may have just answered my next question. Um, if it is proposed that there are substantive changes such as residential districts, commercial districts, industrial districts. Is that by approval at town meeting or is it a you know townwide ballot vote or is it? It's, it's all zoning bylaw changes are through town meeting. Um, there's never a vote on it. The ballot votes are really only for fiscal articles. Uh, so the other thing with town meeting uh, and bylaw uh, uh, votes is that they are two thirds. It's a super majority to pass a bylaw article. So that's why getting consensus and outreach is really important for us. Okay. <clears throat> and it might be too early to ask this question, but let's say in the case where there are substantive changes such as these residential, industrial, commercial districts, any existing non-conforming uses has there been talk, been talk about how those will be addressed? Anything that exists when a bylaw is passed will be left in place. We we just don't have the authority, nor does the state, to say, oh, you, we're kicking you out because <laughs> you don't meet our new zoning district. So uh, it, anything, yeah, existing uses will continue. And, and would that be continuing for only the existing property owner or for future? That carries with the property. Carries with the property, right. Thank you. And not to cut us off with Q&A, but um, that was just a, a great segue to the engagement exercises. Um, so some of the boards are asking for your thoughts and input on um, prioritization of some of the proposed uh, changes. And this will help give the planning board a better idea of 
which which changes or where where they should start as um as they start to take as lisa put it uh the things that are stored in that drawer okay um uh based on feedback from the community we should look at uh site plan review first and then from there we should move to um scenic roads so um i just wanted to highlight uh that that's the the purpose of uh tonight's engagement activities how, how do we do that so oh, uh i i didn't want to cut anyone off oh, okay. uh i i just wanted to make sure there were no no additional questions he just he asked the question at the right time so i okay. figured i so are, are there more questions meg yep so the um, assistance that we've received so far from MAPC has been invaluable. So, and it's uh, finite. So the devil really is in the details. And I think the really heavy lifting and difficult part is going to be when we start trying to divide the town up into zoning districts. And I'm wondering if you're anticipating any further assistance from another source when we get there. I, I believe, and Courtney can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the MAPC is is going to help us start to look at what zoning districts could look like in town, because we do need some maps to start with. Uh, it, and, and even if it's, it, the, the, the fear there is that if you start to draw a map, then people immediately react to it. But we do need to draw a map to start to have the conversation or two versions of what that map could look like. So Courtney, do you have anything to add? To that? Um, I'll just say that um, what you what you were just describing is known as uh, traditional zoning or Euclidean zoning. And that's where you have these very hard defined districts. There are um, some emerging best practices actually look at um, a hybrid of some of those traditional uh, principles mixed with things like form-based code, which is more about the form and the the build of structures. Um, some communities take a transect approach where uh, development int intensifies depending on uh, the um, the the specific uh, area of of town that you're you're in. So it's usually you know on the outskirts more rural, and as you get closer to um, uh, the center of town, that tends to be a, a bit more dense. Um, and then there are some communities that use um, what's been called place types and. Uh, it provides these characteristic descriptions of um, of a specific area without necessarily drawing geographic boundaries. So it talks about the uh, the types of structure, um, the look, the form, the feel of a specific area, and that also kind of ties into the engagement exercise. Um, people often use words like uh charming or quaint or bucolic or um to describe communities and what what we're hoping to get out of uh tonight's engagement exercise is to be able to tie those descriptive words to a geographic location in town so that way we can start to formulate um and structure language that supports or translates um, what some people would call fluffy language into like what does that mean in terms of, of regulations and um, uh, uh, and 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 zoning. So, are you familiar with any other zoning ordinances or bylaws that have sort of what sounds like a hybrid approach uh, that we could be looking at, you know, what in anticipation? 
there, yes, there are a few community, uh, and that's that's been a part of the process as well. Andrea and I have done research in different communities to uh, and presented the planning board with some options of um, of other communities' approach. Um, there are some areas uh, in the U.S. that um, have um, have been a bit more progressive in, in some of those other hybrid approaches uh, um, in comparison to um, Massachusetts. But um, <laughs> did somebody, <laughs> I'm from the South, so. <laughs> um, 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 sorry, <laughs> that just threw me a bit, but, um, we, uh, I think when we we last met with the planning and select board, we had a joint meeting and we presented this, the, the state actually has a website that has every community's um, zoning ordinance or bylaw listed. Um, and we've provided that as a, as a reference point. And we're looking, but we're also encouraging community members the planning board and um, to to take a look and let us know if, if they see something that speaks to them as well. So, Courtney did speak about this sort of form based um, zoning and and it's something new and and it's, it's something I've been starting to read up on um, and so. It, we want to consider these other things because we have a really unique situation here in Essex that we don't have districts right now. And I think um, it's fair to acknowledge that actually drawing hard districts in town is going to be a very tricky thing to do because our town is already so integrated with businesses and, and residents together. So, uh, Drawing drawing districts will be you're shaking your head, Meg. You know, will be tricky. So I think some of these more innovative, uh, flexible form based approaches might be a good solution for Essex in that we can still put some guardrails around what we want the town character to look like, what we want certain areas, the feel of certain areas, without necessarily saying here's the line between commercial and residential or industrial. Actually, that's another thing worth mentioning is that you don't actually, if you start drawing zoning districts, you don't need to, there's nothing that requires you to have an industrial zoning district. There's nothing that out there that says, okay, if you draw districts, you have to draw an industrial one somewhere or a commercial one somewhere. So there's a lot of flexibility in what we could or could not implement. So those are the kind of things that we're trying to look at um, because we we acknowledge that drawing districts will be a challenge, but we also realize that there probably need to be a little bit better guardrails that will protect residential rural areas and people's homes. Is there another question? Again, thank you for all your work. This is a very concrete point and has to do with language and concision and clarity, which I hear are priorities for you. Uh, I'm a professional writer and I had to look up recodification on Google while we were having this uh, presentation tonight. And it, it just sounds like a rewriting when really it's just a reformatting. And I'm thinking that a head of town meeting, is, is there just a way to not boggle people's minds with the word recodification? I, I think, Brendan, correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. I think on my handout, it's, I've called it reorganization. The overview. Yeah, I can put that up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that if we're if we want to get to the next phase, we do. I think we need to since people yeah. are so hesitant about change, we have to make make it clear that this this doesn't represent tangible change. It's just a clearer way of looking at right. Yeah. Right? It, it's a first step to to make change 
more manageable. Right. If and right. when we get to changes, we want to make sure they're more manageable, which is why we're reorganizing the bylaw into this new structure. So that's the handout. Wonderful. That I, Thank you. And, and this handout is online. This is right this coming handout, right from the town's website. Yeah, that's online along with the 50 page, 58 page reorganized bylaw. It's all there. Okay, may not read all 58 pages, but thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't either if I were you. This is just a sample of what that looks like. And Lisa has gone through great lengths along with others to make it um, understandable. So, Are there any other questions or can, do you want to get to the um, engagement exercises? Engagement exercises. Isn't there an engagement specialist back there? Um, we're just trying to explain this, but on the first, I can uh, Andrea, you can you, um, Mike? Okay, just just a quick uh, explanation. Uh, so there are uh, two two map two boards that have maps. Uh, one will ask where where you live here in Essex. Uh, and that's just to, uh, for us to get a better sense of um, a geographic representation for tonight's event. Uh, the same question will be asked for those who participate um, or submit uh, feedback online. Uh, again, I apologize that the, um, the survey um, platform is not ready at this moment, but again, we are doing everything we can to make sure that that's up and running uh, tomorrow, and and you'll be reminded with a follow up email from uh, if you register for for tonight's event. Um, but the the second map will ask you to provide three words that describe the character or of a place that is meaningful or important to you. Um, and again, uh, you can see uh, this as an example, this will help us start to create language that uh, that really um, starts to translate uh, what it is that you're describing um, into actual regulations. Oh, um, it'll help us to start decode some of the uh descript some of the that more descriptive language just a quick update about that one we're going to put it on these tables so that it's flat or it will not like um but we are going to put it yeah, we can put it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, we are going to put this map that Courtney is talking about on one of the tables that are behind us. We just haven't set it up so it's not in our way while we're doing this part so that that way it will be flat and you don't have to look at it. You don't have to like work on it in this setup. So it's not up yet, but once we adjourn to the engagement exercises, it will be. All right. Next slide. And the second set of boards will start to look at some of the um, the uh, priorities that we kind of talk through, um, and it also provides space for you to to add comments on things that weren't mentioned. Again, um, this um, the proposed amendments or suggested amendments that are posted were were gathered through feedback. So uh, just because it's not something that's listed does not mean that it's not something that uh, won't or can't be addressed. So that's why we ask for, for comments and feedback. Um, and if there are specific elements or components of these uh, topic areas that you would like for us to take a deeper look at, please also provide that uh, in your comments. And again, um, this will be available virtually as as well um, for for feedback, but not right now. No. Just clear to be clear for people. And can you tell the folks that are with us remotely where they should look to get into the um, virtual experience for this? Yes. So, in addition to a link being sent 
via email. Uh, the, a link will also be posted on the project webpage, which is on the last slide, which will pop up in just a moment. And <clears throat> it will also, um, the, I'm, I'm sure the town will also um, provide links to that site. Yeah, um, the, our, our town site links to the project webpage. And um, I'll just, I'll show people. Can go to see what right here when you load the site, stay up to date on. No, that's that's Apple Street, the zoning thing right here. And then the uh, dedicated website link is right here. And it takes you to this. And this is where the new virtual experience will, will end up being. Um, and that site just for anyone uh is mapc.ma forward slash essex zoning um and um can we go back to the slideshow just for a moment um this is our contact information both andrea and myself um so if you have questions or would like to um participate as a zoning ambassador or just learn more about the process, please feel free to reach out um, uh, at our emails. Uh, and again, I want to thank everyone for participating, for coming out and for bearing with us through uh, getting situated. So Courtney, at this point in time, for the people that have joined us remotely, I believe the presentation will end and the Zoom meeting will actually end, correct? Correct. Okay, so... Uh, unless there's anything else to coordinate with Andrea, I want to thank Andrea for working the, um, the Zoom presentation behind the scenes. Um, Andrea, I think we can end the presentation in Zoom. Thank you. So 